ounces of gas. So dispensing gas is usually made up of CO2. A brief overview of of beer. Today we're going to be very beer specific, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to just you have to use your draft system for beer specifically. But because of carbonates the beer, so we want to use that same gas that because it's not going to affect the flavor of the beer itself. So when we talk about how we all probably learned how to get beer from a keg is with <clears throat> the hand pumps that you attach to it and you're forcing air into the keg. We don't want to do that because our breathable air is compromised up of 70% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon, and a half percent of CO2. It was along with a couple other smaller things in there as well. But the biggest thing here is the oxygen, right? Because it's such a, it's such a strong oxidizer, as soon as oxygen comes into contact with beer, it starts changing the flavor. And within about an hour or two, uh, your beer ends up tasting like cardboard. So if you're a professional and you're trying to get the beer out of a keg, serving in a professional manner, you don't want oxygen anywhere near or inside of the keg. So we're going to do everything that we can to keep it from entering the keg. The other gas that we can use is nitrogen because, again, it's an inert gas. It, doesn't, it won't affect the flavor of the beer. But if you're pouring straight nitrogen, what happens is the CO2 eventually comes out of suspension in the beer and then it will go flat. So we'll get into the nuances of, of carbonation and that tomorrow, but just know that you can either use CO2 or you can use nitrogen or what a lot of people will do is they'll use what's called beer gas, which is a nitrogen CO2 mix. And that mix and the percentages will depend on how far your, how long your draft line is, um, the resistance in your draft line, um, and what type of beer you're pouring. So the other thing we'll do, talk about is, uh, I guess we'll talk about today, safety, CO2, um, CO2, nitrogen, and um, argon are both heavier than air. So when, we, when we're using CO2, especially in enclosed spaces, either like a draft, uh, draft trailer, a kegerator, a keezer, if there is a leak anywhere, um, we, it, it, it's a, what's the, the effect, it can be, can asphyx, asphyxiate you. So what we want, what we, we just need to be careful. A lot of places will uh, include CO2 monitors that will go, CO2 alarms that will go off in case there's a, um, an overabundance of CO2 or nitrogen in the area. Um, and then if we go back, let's see here. We go. You'll notice here in this long draw draft system, um, they are using a mix of CO two and nitrogen, and this is what uh, we call a that's a gas mixer. And so, if you're pouring a beer that's like sixty percent CO two and forty percent nitrogen, what this will do is it will mix it for you rather than having nitrogen and CO two into one tank. So when you purchase beer gas. Typically, you'll find nitrogen and CO2 inside that tank. The, the downside to doing that is with CO2, you can compress a lot of CO2 into, a, into like a five-pound tank, a smaller tank. And at a certain temperature, that CO2 will, go, will turn into liquid. That same amount of nitrogen takes an extreme amount of pressure to get all of that same amount of nitrogen into a CO2 that you could get into a CO2 tank. It operates at a higher temperature. So CO2 and nitrogen don't typically like to mix very well. And so when you do add them together and you put them into a its own five pound tank, what you wind up getting is like a tank that can only dispense one keg of beer because there's there's just not a lot of gas inside of that tank because the just the way that CO2 and nitrogen operate together, uh, they just the CO2 will 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 turn to will turn to liquid before the before the nitrogen can, and so I mean, there's some nuances in there that we'll we'll get into a little bit more tomorrow about. But um, 